In the last video, we looked at proofs involving sets and we mostly focused on concrete examples of sets, like the set of all even numbers or certain intervals on the real line, so on and so forth. Here we want to do more proofs involving sets, but focus on sets that are arbitrary. Before we do that, I want to recall some arbitrary set operations. So let's say we've got two sets A and B. The union of A and B, so those are all elements X, such that X is in A or X is in B. The intersection of A and B, written like that, that's all elements X such that X is in A and X is in B. The set difference of A from B, or B from A, I should say. So you generally read that as A minus B, and sometimes this minus sign is tilted and sometimes it's not, just depending on the author. So this is all elements X such that X is in A and X is not in B. Next, we've got A complement, which is denoted with a bar over it, or sometimes like a superscript and a C. Again, there's a bunch of notations for that. So that's all elements X that are not in A, where you're taking some general understood or given universal set. And that's usually given to you directly or understood from context. From context, you can usually figure out if you're working in the universe of natural numbers, real numbers, continuous functions, so on and so forth. And then you can take the complement like that. Okay, next we've got the Cartesian product of A and B. So that's A cross B. So those are all ordered pairs X and Y, such that X is in A and Y is in B. I would say that there's maybe a few more set operations. Maybe the next one that I would define that I won't, but if I did, it would maybe be the disjoint union. I want to point out that we did a bunch of examples of these in previous videos if you want to brush up on those facts. Okay, so our first proposition goes like this. So let's say A, B, and C are sets. C is not the empty set, and A cross C is equal to B cross C. Then we want to show that A is equal to B. And we're going to do this using the techniques from the last video, that is doing double inclusion. Although, we'll see that one of the inclusions is very similar to the other one, so I'll leave that one like as an exercise. Okay, so let's suppose that we have an element A from the set A. And so what we want to show is that this element little a is also in the set B. Okay, so then for all C in the set C, and we know that there exists some C because C is not empty, we have the ordered pair A comma C is in the set A cross C. But we know that A cross C is equal to B cross C, so we can use that to say thus A comma C is an element from B cross C. But then from this uh, sentence right here, it quickly follows that A is an element from B. So let's write that down. So A is an element from B. So check it out. Starting with this statement and ending with this statement um, proves that A is a subset of B. And now what's left to show is that B is a subset of A. Thus, putting those together, we get A equals B. I'll actually let you guys show that B is a subset of A. You essentially do the same thing that we did in this proof right here. Okay, before we move on to another example, I'm going to get rid of this proof and then talk about some little points of care that we need to think about involving this proof. Okay, so I want to notice that this proposition is about equality not some other equivalence which is taken to be equality among sets. And that's sometimes known as an isomorphism, maybe in the category set. And here's a real example of the sloppiness that goes on here. And this is not a really big deal like in the grand scheme of things, but for little proofs like this, it does turn out to be a big deal. So for sets A, B, and C, we often write these three guys as being the same thing. So here we've got A cross B cross C, here we have A cross B cross C, and here we have A cross B cross C. 
But notice the shape of their elements is totally different. The shape of this is an ordered pair, where the first entry itself is an ordered pair. The shape of this element is an ordered triple, whereas the shape of this element is an ordered pair where the second entry is an ordered pair. So it's sloppy to say that these are equal, but obviously there's some very natural bijection between these sets. So we could say that they are naturally isomorphic. Okay, and I wanna show that if we take this to be equality and not this like natural equivalence, then this proposition doesn't hold and we can cook up an example pretty quickly. So let's look at R cross R infinity, where by R infinity I mean infinitely many copies of R cross producted with themselves. Notice that's gonna be the same thing as R cross R cross R infinity. Again, here we've got infinitely many plus one copies of R. Here we have infinitely many plus two copies of R, but those are exactly the same. But notice that here we have R cross R is not equal to R. Well, the Cartesian product of R and R is clearly not the same thing as one copy of R. And so that's where this equality is really like misused a little bit. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at another example. So we're gonna end this video with a pretty classic proposition involving the interaction of the union and the intersection. So there are a bunch of very similar results to this, but in my case, I'm gonna save a lot of those for work do during the class that I'm teaching. Okay, so for sets A, B, and C, we want to show that A intersected with B union C is the same thing as A intersected with B union A intersected with C. We're gonna use our general strategy for showing that two sets are equal via double inclusion. So let's maybe go with this direction first. So maybe we could think of that as like the forward direction. So let's go ahead and suppose that we have an element X, which is an A intersected with B union C, like that. Now we wanna unravel this from the outside to the inside via the definition of intersection and union. So what does this mean? This means that X is in A and X is in B union C, great. But now we can continue to unravel this. Maybe we would say something like thus, X is in A and maybe we put this in parentheses to say that this is being acted on by this and statement like this. Uh, we have X is in B or X is in C. Great. Now you could write that with symbolic logic in a draft for this but you wouldn't wanna write that in the final draft that you would turn in. Okay, but now by De Morgan's laws for the and operator and the or operator, which we looked at when we looked at truth tables and logic, we know how they interact with each other. So we can move to say that this means that so X is in A or X is in B and X is in A or X is in C. That's how this AND operator distributes over this OR operator. Okay, nice. But we can ravel this back into what it means to be inside these sets pretty easily. Uh, maybe we would finish this off by saying finally, this means that X is in A union B um, intersected with A union C. Just putting this English sentence back into a mathematical sentence with intersections and unions. So in fact, all of these steps are really if and only if statements. So we could use the same argument in reverse to show this other inclusion as well. So I'll leave that for you guys and I'll just finish the proof here. And that's a good place to stop.